Hi, my name is Romnick Blanco. I'm 22 years old and currently an undergraduate student at Harvard University leading towards history and government. First of all, I want to thank the organizers of camp for making this event possible and for kindly inviting me to share a little bit about my experience and knowledge when it comes to applying to colleges and universities abroad, which hopefully will be of some assistance to all of us as we go through this process. Now, just to tell you a little bit about myself, as someone who was born and raised in an impoverished farming community at the foothills of the mountains, and as someone who comes from a family of nine boys, I always dreamt of being able to go to school and finishing my studies so that I wouldn't end up like my brothers, none of whom finished high school, one not even grade school. However, with our living condition, hand-to-mouth existence, I didn't know how that would happen and I didn't think I would even be able to finish high school, want more go to college, want more abroad. And so every time I think about the blessings that I have received, the people who have helped me, those whom God brought into my path to believe in me, to support me, and to help me every step of the way, I really stand in awe and I still cannot believe up to this day. Now, obviously this video is not about me, but about you and uh, about the tips that I will um, give you, which hopefully will be helpful to you. And so let's jump into the statements which I have been given um, to comment on. And hopefully this is something, again, we will learn from. So let's look at the first one on our list. You are on your own. I understand this statement as, during the application process, no one is going to help you at all. This is a lie because obviously the fact that you're listening to me right now and I uh, am explaining these things is an evidence that there are people out there, students who went through the same process, who are more than willing to go out of their way um, and answer your specific questions, your, address your concerns as you apply to colleges and universities. I myself will be more than willing to provide assistance that you need and so will the organizers of this very program. Now for some of us who are privileged enough to attend schools with a lot of resources and with teachers and guidance counselors who are trained and knowledgeable about these things, you can actually go to them and ask them the questions that you have in mind. In general, guidance counselors travel abroad and visit universities so that they can get the latest when it comes to um, applying to colleges and universities and guide their students back home. So don't be shy. Don't hesitate to go to their office and ask them questions. Now for some of us who are not as privileged and go to schools with not a lot of resources and who do not have counselors and teachers who can help us with these things, Remember that information are the tips of our finger. We can go online, go to the websites of the schools that we are interested in applying to, and be in touch with the admissions officers. These are people who are more than willing to answer your questions. And if you have the means, you can even visit the schools and sit down with an admission officer, ask to be connected with a student so that you can be guided and get helpful advice from students themselves who went through the same thing. I know for um, as from my own experience that there are students, I've guided a few, I've given them a tour and answered questions that they had as they were applying to colleges. So this is something that you can do. You are not on your own. Now let's look at the second one. It reads, there are no scholarships for international students. Again, this is not true because if this is true i wouldn't be here talking to you right now just to tell you a little bit about um, uh, my own experience when i applied to colleges and got the results four universities generously offered me full ride scholarships and they wanted to um, pay for the tuition the room and board health insurance the transportation etc etc so it's not true that there are no scholarships for international students. 
And there are three things that I want you to look up as you um, prepare for your college applications. The first one is need blind. The second one is need based. And the third one is merit based. These are three things that will be um, helpful to you, that will come in handy when you are looking for schools that provide scholarships. So look those things up. Next up, only grades and test scores matter. Well, I can't speak for all the colleges and universities around the world because I've only applied to a few. But just think about this. The fact that colleges and universities ask you to submit your essays, to submit a list of all your extracurriculars, and to submit your test scores as well as your grades, it shows that they want to look at you holistically. I know that some of you may say, yeah, but this school says on their website that um, they put more emphasis on the grades and this one says that they put more emphasis on the extracurriculars you have done. But again, think about this. If they only care about your grades, why would they even ask, why would they even um, debate among this, themselves, the um, admissions committee members, whether or not to get you? It's because they actually care about something else. That's why it's hard for me to believe that grades and test scores are the only things that matter when you're applying to colleges and universities. Number four, you need a lot of impressive extracurricular activities to study abroad. Honestly, this is something that I think is not even possible. Can you manage 10 different activities on top of your academics and do well at all of them? I highly doubt it. And this is something that I think admissions officers from around the world also understand as they look at um, the candidates or the applicants. But does this mean that they don't want to see their students or their applicants take part in different activities while in high school? Of course they do because they want to see if you are um, able to work with different people, if you can take on different projects and different roles. Hence, they want you to be part of something. But it doesn't mean that they all, they all have to be impressive. Now, just to talk about my own experience back in high school. I was part of drama, um, dance, music, track and field, and cross country throughout my four years in high school. Um, but were they impressive? I don't think so. But there is one project that I'm most proud of. It's planting trees, which, I, uh, which is a five-year project. I started in middle school up to um, the fourth year of high school. So if there's one thing I can suggest um, when it comes to um, thinking about extracurriculars, don't try to be part of everything and try to do well in all of them. It's understandable that it's impossible or that it's difficult. Um, and so focus on one project. Something that you can be proud of, even if you don't get accepted to college, you know that you have done something for the planet that you live in and that you're able to impact the lives of people while you are in high school. Next, it is impossible to get into schools abroad. Believe you me when I say it is possible to study abroad. I'm a living testament. And you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be the top of your class. You don't have to be good at everything. It is possible with proper guidance, with proper research, and with proper preparation. Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Keep that in mind. Number six on our list reads, only international school high school kids get into good colleges. I'm sensing a myth within a myth here, and I'm referring to good colleges. What constitutes as good colleges? How do you measure goodness? Oftentimes we have this misconception that top tier schools, which I believe is being referred to here, equal good colleges. You see, I don't think it's true because different colleges have different specializations. Some are better at certain programs than others. So this is something that we have to consider. Um, when we're looking at colleges and we are interested in applying to certain programs, we have to look at how long has this college been offering this program and we have to look at the reviews of the students. That's why it's nice to be connected, um, to be in touch with the students from different schools so that you can understand um, um, how the programs that you're interested in 
interested in works in that college. Now, the other myth I'm referring to is only international school students get into top tier colleges, which I believe is being referred to here. Um, I do understand the thinking behind this idea that international, ski international school kids have access to um, different programs such as the IB program, the AP program, different extracurricular activities, teachers and counselors from whom they could get um, advice and tips. Yes, they help, but it not, it's not necessarily true. I have met and I'm friends with students in college who have not even heard of IB or AP, and yet they are in college. So again, this is not true. Um, if you really need to know um, something, you can always go online. You can, um, everything is online nowadays. So it's not necessarily true that only international school kids will get into top tier schools. Next thing we have, it's too expensive to live abroad and it's not worth the money. Well, friends, investing in your future, your education is never too expensive. We always have to keep that in mind. And practically speaking, if you are on a full ride scholarship, your tuition, your room and board, your health insurance, transportation will be covered for you by the school. So there's nothing to worry about. But if you're saying, I'm applying to a school with no, uh, that doesn't offer any scholarship, and I'm afraid that will be too expensive for me. Well, if that is the case, then maybe you should consider looking at colleges in the Philippines that offer the same program and um, applying to that instead. There's always that option. But again, um, it's never too expensive if you're in a full ride scholarship. That's why you should look for schools that offer um, financial assistance. We are getting close to the end of our list. Number eight, we have, you won't have a support system when you study abroad. To be honest, this is also something that I was worried about moving to the United States to study for the first time. I kept asking myself, who will take care of me when I get sick? How will I survive? How will I do this and do that? Now, one thing I realized is that when you move to college, you will be in an environment with students of different backgrounds, different um, needs, and you will learn how to depend on one another. So you, you will have that family, that community um, within um, the student body. But aside from this, there, is also, um, there are also a lot of initiatives by the school to help the students feel at home. There is what you call the pre-orientation program and there is the orientation program. And students are connected with um, other students so that they will feel at home and their needs will be met. Now for first generation students, meaning those students who are the first ones in their family to um, go to college, more and more programs are being done for them. So that is not something to worry about. The first thing you have to worry about is how to get into college. This, everything will fall into place once you're in there. So second to the last, we have making friends while studying abroad will be too hard and you lose all your friends from the Philippines after spending so much time away. I wanna address the second half of this uh, statement first, which is you lose all your friends from the Philippines after spending so much time away. I think that this is not um, necessarily true because in my case, I actually um, feel that I've gotten closer to my friends because I don't see them all the time. So when I get home, I wanna catch up with them. I wanna share stories, etc., etc. So if you have this bond, connection, um, you have nothing to worry about because you will not lose your friends. Now jumping into the first half of this statement, which is making friends while studying abroad will be too hard. Again, this is also not true because as I said earlier, you are put into this environment where everyone is just looking for someone to depend on. So um, you will find yourself making friends easily. Plus you are, um, you for sure will, will be joining a lot of um, clubs and um, or organizations. So there's a lot of opportunity to make um, people who have the same passions, interests um, as you. So again, there's nothing to worry about. Um, when it comes to uh, making friends or losing your friends. Finally, we have studying abroad is too dangerous. I find this um, statement too um, broad because it can mean a lot of things. It can mean you can get harassed, you can get discriminated against, you can get bullied. But we have to remember that these are things that can happen to us um, in other parts of the world and even here in the Philippines. 
um, there's no place that is too safe. So that's one thing that we have to consider. But if what they mean is it's not safe on campus, I'll have to disagree with that. Um, because it's actually, based on my experience, been pretty safe. Because there are what you call proctors who live with you um, in your dormitory. Sometimes your dean even um, lives in the same building as you. And when you go outside, um, there are um, emergency posts scattered in the area. So if you're in danger, you can just press any of those and help will come to you immediately. So um, I think that it's not uh, dangerous to be on campus. To end, I just want to say that there's nothing to get scared about, worry about when you're applying to colleges or universities. There are so many resources available to you. You have your, prof uh, your uh, guidance counselors who are trained to help you. You have um, your teachers, and even if they're not trained to um, help you with this, they at least can give you um, tips and answer your questions because they do, at some point, apply to colleges. So um, there's that. Plus, there are a lot of resources online um, that you can use as you do your research. And finally, there's um, students like myself and the very founder or organizers of this ev event um, whom you can ask specific questions. Um, and if you have specific questions for me, I will provide my um, contact information to um, the organizers of this event. Feel free to ask them. So with that, I wish you um, the very best. Um, go for it. Don't hesitate. You have nothing to lose. God bless you and thank you.